Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos with me, Clarissa Sorensen Unruh. We are going to talk about Planck's equation some more today. <laughs> so we have this problem. Planck's equation is something that can be used in several different ways. The most common variation of that equation that we're going to use is the energy of a photon equals hc over lambda, where lambda is the only other variable here. It is the wavelength, and hc are both constants, right? So h equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. c is equal to the speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the negative, oh, t times 10 to the negative 8th. <laughs> That's a way positive number, by the way. It's positive 8. It's a big number, speed of light, which you would expect because it's hard to overcome. All right, so 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second is the constant we'll be using. And remember that this particular exam is hard because C in chapter 7 means the speed of light. C in chapter 6 means specific heat capacity. It's a little confusing at times. All right, so having said this, we need the um, wavelength. The wavelength is given to us, right? So the wavelength here is 525 nanometers. Let's go ahead and plug and chug that. Okay, why did I, by the way, know that I needed um, this particular moment? Because I knew that I was using Planck's equation, mostly because I was given some kind of wavelength. That's kind of the end deal. If I'm given a wavelength, on the exam, I'm either using de Broglie's equation or de Broglie's wavelength, um, and that's what I've been given or I'm finding, or I'm given some kind of moment, and I have, I have some kind of moment of wavelength, and I have a lot of talk about energy. When I'm given a wavelength and I have any kind of conversation about energy, I'm going to be using this equation. Okay. In this particular chapter. All right, or maybe I should say this particular context, if you could actually do this in the loveliness of physics as well. There's my two uh, constants right by each other. I put my wavelength on the bottom, and lo and behold, I find out, hey, I'm canceling out stuff, life is great, seconds and seconds cancel out, meters and nanometers do not, problem. So I need a conversion factor between meters and nanometers, and I need to make it thin. So how many nanometers are in a meter? 10 to the ninth, folks. There are 10 to the ninth nanometers in one meter. So that's where I can go with that, right? I can cancel out now nanometers and meters, and I can get the energy of the photon. So that's the energy of one photon. That's what I'm getting out of Planck's equation. 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times 2.998 times 10 to the 8th times 1 EE9. That's how I plug in my lovely nanometer conversion. Divided by 525, I get a cool number that's times 10 to the negative 19th. Something which we know that if it's visible light, which this checks out as visible light, it's between 400 and 750 nanometers, then I should probably get some number times 10 to the negative 19th in the joules. All right, that is cool. All right, now that I have that, I'm going to use that in this particular equation. Recognize that this could be made, this right here, could be made into a conversion factor. And what's the conversion factor we're going to do here? We're going to say that every time that you have 3.78 times 10 to the ne negative 19th joules emitted, that's the equivalent of the energy from one photon. OK, now that we've had, we have this, we're going to call this good. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to leave the top equation up there just not the answer, which we have over here as well. And we're going to use this in a dimensional analysis problem. Okay. Which is the second half of this. 
Okay, so the dimensional analysis problem we're dealing with here. What do we have to begin with? Well, I've already used this number in the midst of this equation. So I need to use that number. I'm going to assume that that's the initial number I was given. There it is. What am I looking for in the end? I'm looking for photons. Okay. So I need a conversion factor that goes between joules and photons. And lo and behold, I just made myself one. Wasn't that awesome? That's such great foresight there, Rissa. All right, so I know that every time that I use, or I emit, I would say emit here, 3.78 times 10 to the negative 19th joules, that's the equivalent of the energy from one photon, right? If I had a conversion factor between joules and kilojoules, I'd be done. So lo and behold, I do. Every time I have one kilojoule, that is the equivalent of a thousand joules. Notice that kilojoules cancel out, joules cancel out. I'm left with photons in the end. Awesome, 189 times 1,000 divided by 3.78 EE negative 19th gives me a crazy number of photons. How about 5 times 10 to the 23rd? If I wanted to do the correct number of significant figures here, there were three here. There were three here. I should put a 5.00. <laughs> so let's go ahead and rewrite that out. Photons. And that is my answer, folks. If I had been given, for instance, this, for instance that this was 189 kilojoules per mole, then this would have been a different problem. Same kind of deal, but a different problem indeed. And the reason why is because you can still calculate the number of uh, photons and the energy here. It just becomes a little bit of, um, you're, you're finding something different, right? So in this case, you could have said, if this was kilojoules per mole, then you could have said that in one mole, there are um, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd photons. Right? And then you could have said, every time I have one photon, that's the equivalent of 3.78 times 10 to the negative 19th joules, right? And you could have said as well that every time you have a thousand joules, that's one kilojoule. The question here is, usually you're not given all of this information. Usually you're finding like the amount of energy per joule. You're not given the amount of energy per joule when you're given kilojoules per mole. And the reason why is because notice everything cancels out. What exactly am I finding here? It's a good question to ask. But the important piece here that I want you to recognize is that while this was the answer to this particular problem, you can use Avogadro's number for photons. They are m nanoparticles, and they can be treated just the same way as atoms, ions, so on and so forth. Okay, so you can use them to find numbers like this in the midst, and then find wavelengths and such using the uh, Planck's equation. So you can go backwards a little bit if you need to. But in this case, the top case, what we use to solve the problem, you did not need the conversion factor of Avogadro's number because the amount of energy you found in Planck's equation was per photon. All right, summing it up, giving you a little bit of thing, some things to think about until I see you again.